वेलकम टू ए न्यू लेक्चर टुडे आफ्टर ए गैप टुडे टॉपिक इज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ डेयरी इंडस्ट्री इन इंडिया दिस टॉपिक शुड हैव कम बिफोर बट समहाउ आई कुड नॉट मेक इट एंड एज यू नो इंडिया इज नंबर वन इन मिल्क प्रोडक्शन एंड इट वॉज थ्रू ग्रेट प्रोग्राम्स ऑन डेयरी डेवलपमेंट इन विच वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट आर्किटेक्ट वॉज डॉक्टर वार्गीस कुरियन दैट्स वाई आई हैव पुट हिज पोर्टेड इन द फर्स्ट पेज हियर इन द टाइटल पेज सो इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द लिटल बीट अबाउट द हिस्ट्री एंड द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्रोग्राम्स थ्रू विच वी हैव रीच to the stage today as the number one milk producers and little bit about the pros and cons here let us understand at a glance little bit brief about the present indian dairy industry as you know the major milk producing animals are cattle and buffalo and little bit from the goat sheep and camel which are also considered as milch animal or dairy animals but cattle and buffalo contribute more than 97% of the total milk produced in the country you can see in the box right side below that is buffalo contributes about 48% cow another 48% and goat about 2 to 3% in the box left side below we can see that india is the highest producer of milk today and we have the largest cattle population of the total milk about 50 to 52% undergoes processing of which the value addition that is the milk product is prepared up to 35% of the milk and milk if you see the livestock as such contributes about 28.3% of the agricultural contribution to the gdp of india the total contribution coming from agriculture of each 28 almost 30% comes from the livestock sector here first we will discuss about the history of development that is the retrospective development of dairy industry in india and at the end i will discuss more details about the present status so this development or history we will discuss basically in two category one is the pre independence period that is the before independence 1947 and next we will discuss about the post independence period that is after 1947 in this section again we will have two separate part first is about the pre operation flood program as you know operation flood program plays a major role in increasing the dairy development in india and the second part will be post operation flood as i mentioned we are briefly going to see the history of dairy development in india uh, first in the pre independence period so as old as in 1889 that is the first beginning establishment of military dairy farms the oldest one was in allahabad followed by in bangalore and then wellington near uti that is tamil nadu and then in karnal these are the beginning for establishing the dairy farms basically it was for the supply of milk to the military that was the effort taken by the british government at that time then 1914 there is a change that is establishment of board of agriculture through which there was a details effort for the development of dairy industry in india as i mentioned with the recommendation of the board of agriculture some new initiatives were taken for the development of dairy in india by the then british government in 1923 the existing military farms that is the dairy farms at bangalore wellington and karnal were transferred under the control of department of agriculture in 1924 a diploma or postgraduate diploma courses 
in Daring was started in Bangalore and Allahabad Agriculture Institute. So this is the first effort for scientific education on dairy development or dairy farming. In 1929, there was the establishment of Imperial Council of Agricultural Research. So today it is called Indian Council of Agriculture Research and that was established at this time and also there was Bangalore Institute renamed as Imperial Dairy Institute. There was an institute in Bangalore on dairy education which was renamed as Imperial Dairy Institute. Here in 1941 that Bangalore Institute I told for dairy education it was further renamed as Imperial Dairy Research Institute. In fact, this is the mother of present day National Dairy Research Institute in Karnal, which I will mention again. In 1940, first time long distance refrigerated rail transport of meal started from Anand to Bombay. So, Anand is a place in Gujarat where there was more development on dairy, so more production of milk. So, from there, the milk was transported to Bombay through refrigerated rail. In 1946, the first farmers cooperative complex was established in Kaira district at Anand. As I mentioned, Anand is the district headquarter that in Gujarat, that is Kaira district, in which the first farmers cooperative was established in 1946. So, so far I was talking about the pre-independence that is up to 1946. Then in 1947 we got independence and here is the new efforts after independence. Now as I mentioned this part we will discuss in two categories. One is pre-operation flood and then post-operation flood. Here in 1950 large scale pasteurization and bottling of milk started at array milk colony Bombay. So this is an area where there was a lot of dairy processing facilities were established. So that is the beginning for pasteurization of milk and bottling through which milk can be supplied. In 1955, National Dairy Research Institute was established in Karnal and this was also there in National Dairy Research Institute in Bangalore. Then 1959, Mother Dairy at Calcutta and Delhi. So this is under the control of government. First time the large dairy plant was established in Calcutta and Delhi. Later in 1963, similar Mother Dairy was established in Madras, which is now called as Chennai. And then finally in 1965, first time National Dairy Development Board was established. So this is a major turning point for dairy development in India. This is in short NDDB. This makes the beginning for the large scale scheme for developing the dairy industry that was through Operation Flood, which we are going to discuss in more details. So we are discussing about the dairy development program before Operation Flood. So after independence, the government of India took the new initiative for development of India on all aspect and that was done under the five year plans as we know through the planning commission. So in this there was specific emphasis for the development of dairy industry also. So first three five year plan, first year, first five years, second five year and third five year that was 51 to 56 second was 56 to 61 and third was 61 to 66. So in these three phases, there was initiative for development of dairy and briefly we will discuss. So here we will see the major objectives of five year plans. Firstly, for the establishment of milk plants or dairy plans for dairy development all over India. Secondly, there is a dual objective of increasing the national level of milk consumption and ensuring better returns 
to the primary milk producer. So, so far the milk consumption was very less. So, nationally the level of milk consumption should be increased. That was the em emphasis. And also the milk producers or the dairy farmers should have better income. These are the twin objectives. So, overall the main objective of the five-year plans was to produce more milk, better milk and cheaper milk. So, this was the objective for five-year plans as I mentioned the first, second and third before operation flood. So, here briefly we will see the contributions of five-year plans to dairy development. Firstly, the dairy acquired national level recognition and planned approach for development started in government sector. Secondly, organized marketing of milk and milk products, products started. Thirdly, entry of multinational in dairy business. So, so far there was not much investment from the private companies. So, with the government effort, the big companies started coming in the dairy development or investing in it. Then started marketing of toned milk. So, toned milk is a specific milk in which the milk is reduced to a particular level. Generally, it is 3% of fat in the milk. And then intensive cattle development program. This is a specific government scheme for development of cattle so that the milk production can be increased. That is in short very popular as ICDP. And also there was effort for development of technical manpower. That is training of the human for better milk processing or production etc. So now we will discuss about the dairy development post-dependence, post-independence during the operation flood. So what is this operation flood? This is basically the strategy for organized dairy development in India and it was conceived in 1960s, late 1960s after the establishment of NDDB in 1965. I have already mentioned National Dairy Development Board was established in 1965 and NDDB conceived a special program for dairy development which was approved by Government of India. Basically NDDB was established with the objectives of promoting dairy cooperatives, financing the dairy infrastructure and providing technical and managerial support to those cooperatives. However, in 1969, when Government of India approved the Operation Flood program and its financing through the monetization of World Food Program, there was some difficulty. That is, the statutes of the NDDB was registered, did not allow handling of government funds. So, this let me tell this World food program. This is a program coming from developed countries. They were gifting us the extra food materials, especially the skim milk powder and butter oil. So government of India wanted to sell it and get the money and that money was planned to use for the operation flood program. However, the difficulty was as per the regulations, the NDDB cannot handle such government fund. So that was solved by another way which I will tell next. As I mentioned there was a technical difficulty in handling the fund so then it was solved by forming a new organization that is Indian Dairy Corporation. In 1970 government of India established a public sector company Indian Dairy Corporation or IDC. This IDC is given the responsibility for receiving the project's donated commodities that is under the World Food Program. Donated commodities were received by IDC and then they are testing and storage and transfer to user dairies as well as receiving the dairies payments. So what they did, the commodity like skim milk powder and the butter oil, they recombined and produced milk which was sold and from that they got, got money. That money was used for the Operation Flood program. Thus, the financial and promotional aspects were handled by IDC whereas the technical support for the Operation Flood program was provided by NDDB. 
So initially this operation flood program was done in three phases. The first phase was 1970 to 1981. The second phase that is 1979 to 1985 and operation flood phase three was 1986 to 1990. So each of these briefly I am going to discuss next. So here is the basic concept of this operation flood. As I mentioned earlier, there was a Kaira district in Gujarat where the Anand is the headquarter for there was a first dairy cooperative which was very successful and somewhere in 1964 5 at this time our the then Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri visited this cooperative and he was very happy and then he proposed to re replicate the same pattern all over India. That was the concept of Operation Flood program in which there is a three tier system that is the at the state level there is federation at the district level there is union and at the village level primary village cooperatives this is the three tier structure at the state level there is the products marketing at the district level procurement manufacturing of dairy products and technical inputs cooperative development programs to the farmers and at the village level there is milk production and pooling through the farmers then it is chilling and going to the dairy plant. This is the basic concept for operation flood program. Here is the objective of operation flood phase 1 that is expansion of existing dairies in four metropolitan cities. I have mentioned in the pre-independence area uh, the, the four metro dairies were established in Calcutta, Delhi, Chennai and Bombay. Then new dairies in four metropolitan cities that was the plan to establish more dairies. Then storage and long distance transportation of milk to develop. Then feeder or balancing dairy plan so that the extra milk can be stored and buffering capacity should be there for supply. Then milk collection and chilling center establishment of milk collection and chilling center which plays important role for organized dairy system. And then resettlement of city kept milch animals. So those days there were many dairy farms within the cities that should be shifted and resettled. These are some of the objectives of Operation Flood Phase 1. This is in continuation of objectives of Operation Flood Phase 1 that is increasing the milk production by improving the breeding and developing better milk yielding variety of cows and their better feeding and scientific management, development of improved milk animals as I mentioned, the cooperative organization that is for handling, collection and marketing and better return and profit for the farmers, project planning, manpower development that is for training and development of better scientific manpower, and then miscellaneous like handling of skim milk powder and butter oil that is from the World Food Program received as a donation which was recombined, sold and getting the money for this program. So here is little more details about the Operation Flood Phase 1. In the first phase, 1970 to 80, it was financed through the sale of 1.26 thousand ton of skim milk powder and 42 thousand of butter oil gifted by the European Union through the Operation World Food Program. So from these materials received free, it was recombined into milk which was sold and the money obtained was used for the implementation of Operation Flood Program. So India currently having 13,3348 village dairy cooperatives with federated into 177 milk unions and 15 federations. That is 15 federations at state level and 177 district unions that produced on an average of 25,1 million liters of milk per day. Village dairy cooperatives have nearly 14 million farmers as the members. So these are some of the achievements from the Operation Flood Phase 1. So here is few more achievements of Operation Flood Program Phase 1. The modern dairies in the four metropolitan cities increased their throughput from 1,000 
from 9 lakh liter per day in 1970 to 23.4 lakh liter per day in 1981. By the end of phase 1, the modern dairy share in liquid milk market has increased heavily and we can see in Bombay there was 62% increase, in Calcutta 36% increase, in Delhi 57% increase and in Madras 45% increase. Now we will discuss briefly about Operation Flood Phase 2 which was 1981 to 85. So Government of India provided 273 crores in 6th 5 year plan. As I have told earlier, the first, second and third five year plan was over. After that, the Operation Flood program came and the first phase took the fifth, uh, fourth and five year plan and the second phase comes the sixth five year plan. There was a financial aid of 235 crores provided by World Bank and from the World Food program that free donation I told that is 188,000 tons of skim milk powder and 76,000 tons of butter oil which was combined and sold to get the money for this phase 2 and the NDDB itself by that time had a lot of money so they have financed 77 crores. So these are the basis for the second phase and the achievements are the number of village level cooperatives reached to 34,500 and which covered 36 lakh farmers as the members in the cooperatives with 136 rural milk sets. The peak milk procurement increased in this phase 2 to 79 lakh liter per day and marketing to 50 lakh liters per day. Here is the objectives of operation flood phase 3 1985 to 1994 almost 10 years the third phase focused on strengthening of dairy cooperatives then institutional strengthening by training research market promotion and monitoring and evaluation and thirdly to expand the infrastructure in all major markets linking them to milk sets through the national milk grid. So today we know there is national power grid but actually national milk grid was established even long before that. So here we can see the, uh, the financial allocation from NDDB 207 crores, from external assistance from World Bank 872 crores and from European Economic Commission which is now called as European Union that is 222 crores. So total about 1300 crores was invested for phase 3 of Operation Flood. Here is the salient achievement under Operation Flood phase 3 that is primary cooperative societies increased to 70,000 covering 170 milk sets with 93.14 lakh members in the cooperatives. The sum of 26,000 tons of balanced feed and 24,000 tons of bypass protein feed was sold through cooperatives and average milk production per day reached 115 lakh liter per day and total markets of milk 100 lakh liters per day. So these are the salient achievements under Operation Flood Phase 3. So here we can see at a glance the overall achievement under Operation Flood starting 1971 till 1996 that is phase 1, phase 2 and phase 3. So we can see the number of milk said which was only 5 lakhs had reached to 170 lakhs. Then dairy cooperative societies 1600 to 70,000. The farmer member 2.8 lakh to 93 lakhs. Average milk production from 5.2 lakh tons to 115 lakh tons and the other things like total processing, total marketing, AI centers, everything has increased and the investment was at the beginning 116 crore and at the last part 1300 crore that is in the phase 3. 
here we will see the objectives of operation flood program phase 4 which is not very well known the operation flood phase 4 started in 1996 and up to 2006 for 10 years here the major objectives were to create infrastructure and strengthening democratic values in the cooperatives then strengthening the cooperatives by providing funds on 50 50 ratio from central and state government and to increase the extension work in the fields of cooperatives education personal training marketing support product development and improving standards so there was more emphasis given on this technical aspect training and product development and standards etc in the phase 4 of operation flood program so far i was discussing about the dairy development schemes that is pre-independence post independence before operation flood and after operation flood now we will discuss what is the present status of indian dairy industry so before that let us first understand about the livestock population very briefly you may be aware about it the cattle is about 192 million buffalo another 109 million and put together bovine population is about 300 million and india is number one in cattle and buffalo population in the world and then we have sheep population around 70 75 million which is number three in the world and goat population around 148 or roughly 150 which is number two in the world and in addition we have other animals like camel mithun yak horses ponies mule donkeys all together around 1.24 million so this is the latest statistics from the 20th livestock census of india in continuation about the present status of dairy industry in India, so India is ranked first in milk production in the world, contributing about 23% of global production and the present figure is almost 210 million ton. Here the 80 million people that is 800 lakh people are employed in dairy industry and dairy is the single largest agricultural commodity contributing 5% to the national economy, single largest agricultural commodity. In the bottom precisely we can see in 19, 19 to 20 a comparison between India and world total milk production in India 198 and world 906, per capita availability 407 gram and in the world 115 gram, this is the average, annual growth rate almost 6% in India whereas in the world it is only 2%. So here we will see the retrospective milk production in India starting from 2000 it is around 80 million ton and per capita availability of milk was 220 and today in 2020 and 21 the production has reached 209.6 or almost 210 million ton and the per capita availability is 406 gram per day. So this shows a phenomenal increase whereas the world average for milk production is 906 million ton and the availability of milk is far below the Indian average as I have told earlier. So here is a present almost recent figure about the state wise milk production the number one is Uttar Pradesh almost 30.5 million ton and second is Rajasthan 23.6 million ton then comes Madhya Pradesh 15.9 Andhra Pradesh 15 then Gujarat 14.5 and then comes Punjab, Maharashtra, Haryana and Tamil Nadu these are the top few states in milk production and about Pondicherry it is around 50,000 ton. So this is the figure is somewhere around 18 and 19. Here we will see the state wise per capita availability of milk in 1819. So here we can see the highest availability is Punjab 1181, Haryana almost 1000 plus, Rajasthan 870, Gujarat 626. Himachal Pradesh 565. So this is, these are the states which are mostly vegetarian in nature. So all these 
states the milk is consumed very high you can see the uttar pradesh which is 371 gram per day but actually the production is very high they are number one but this changes is due to the population though the milk production is high in uttar pradesh but the number of population is very high so here we are making the average per head availability of milk per day so this gives an idea in puducherry it is quite less it is around 100 gram per day here is some facts about milk processing close to 45 percent of milk produced retained in villages to consume as fresh milk or converted to traditional dairy products within rural areas on an average almost 50 52 percent milk is processed the 30 to 35 percent is handled by traditional vendors most of it is sold raw and as traditional dairy products in peri-urban and semi-urban areas 20 to 22 percent of milk produced is handled by organized sector and that is equally shared by private and cooperative dairy plants and total number of dairy plants in the country is around 800 so that's a phenomenal progress in overall milk processing at the beginning also i told almost 50 percent is processed for the different dairy products and of which the major is of course ghee which we are going to see again here we will see the common milk products produced in india previously i have told that milk processed it is almost more than 50 55 percent now it is steadily increasing whereas the liquid milk part is reducing and among the milk we can see the whole milk butter or fresh butter butter oil ghee milk powder skim milk powder butter milk fresh cheese and for baby foods or milk powders with baby foods but among these products if we see that major is the ghee consumed in india that is 27.5 percent and fluid milk 46 to 50 percent so this is an idea about how milk is consumed or processed and what are the common dairy products here briefly again we will see about the production and export I have already mentioned the major producer of milk in order is Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Himachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Haryana. These are the major producer of milk and for dairy products especially. Whereas the export is India's export time is 51,000 tons to the world for the worth of 186 million dollar during the year 2021 and the major export destination is UAE, Bhutan, Turkey, Egypt and USA. Now we will discuss some of the recent dairy development schemes or projects under the government. The first one is National Dairy Plan Phase 1 of the government of India during 2012-13 to 2016-17 with an outlay of rupees 2,242 crore implemented by NDDB in 14 major dairying states. The next one is National Program for Dairy Development, then Dairy Entrepreneurship Development Scheme DEDS. Next one is Support to Dairy Cooperatives and then Dairy Processing and Infrastructure Development Fund DIFD Dairy Processing and Infrastructure Development Fund this is specifically focused on establishing dairy product development and dairy plant development and presently one of the big scheme under implementation that is National Livestock Mission in this scheme also there is a focus on improving the dairy development and milk production here we can see some of the big dairy processing companies, either government or private. Amul, as you all know, very famous in Anand Gujarat, Anand Milk Union Limited. Avin is in Tamil Nadu, very famous. Mother Dairy, it is there in metro cities. Heritage Food, again, is a very big company. Britannia is well known. Tirumala Milk Products in Andhra Pradesh. 
Hudson Agro is a big private company for milk and milk products. Parag Milk, Gokul, SMC Foods, Vijay Dairy, very famous in Andhra Pradesh, Milk Fed, and KCMMF, that is Karnataka Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation. So these are some of the big dairy plants for processing milk and milk products. So here I will tell briefly about future. This is a news clipping in Times of India today. So there is a Indian dairy industry conference in Gujarat Gandhinagar. Our home minister has projected the future mission by 2033 that is 10 years from now India is going to be having a quantum jump and our milk production is expected to reach from 210 to 330 million ton. Presently our growth is around 6.6% and it may go up to 13.8% and by that time we may reach a contribution of 33% of milk to the world milk production. So this is the projection from today's news in the conference in Gandhinagar. Now I would like to sum up about today's lecture. So today mainly I have discussed about the retrospective development of Indian dairy industry. So I have mentioned in glimpse what is the status. Then I have mentioned the different stages of growth and development in dairy industry starting from pre-independence, then post-independence where I have talked pre-operation flood and post-operation flood. And finally I have discussed in details what is the present status including the livestock, the milk production, milk processing and export, per capita availability of milk products and what we are heading to. So briefly this is about the development of Indian industry, Indian dairy industry. Hope it will be useful. Thank you very much.